Well, apologies for the handheld shots, uh, but this is going to be a little bit different video today, and this is a rather large device. This is a Centrum uh, Transista Automatica from, I would say, 1967, probably. Now, what this is, is as Centrum was a uh, a Swedish company and they sold this as a rebranded version of, if you can see this on the screen here, um, get that out of the way, obviously you can see it's the same radio um, by Normand, right? Uh, and if you look at the bottom of this one, you will see it says, well, it's upside down, but it says somewhere here, yes, upside down, made in West Germany, Western Germany. So, this radio has a bit of a family history. This is one my parents bought in Stockholm in almost certainly 1967. Uh, the year I note for this one is 1965-66. As I said, I'm pretty sure they bought this in 67. Um, it's an FM, long wave, Um, short wave and medium wave radio with an AFC. It's got every possible connector on it. It has a backlit display and I've in fact been in this radio before when I was maybe 18 and so I know a little bit about it. I know it's quite complex and the reason I say this is going to be a different video is because well I want to open this th thing up today I don't intend to actually make an attempt to fix it as of yet. So uh, this is a quite complicated radio and obviously it has some personal connection to me. So most of the radios I work on, if it gets busted, I'd be upset, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. This one I'd be a little bit more upset. Uh, the dial on this is really quite brilliant. And uh, let's see if I can get this. It's really difficult to keep from shining things on it. It is uh, backlit if you push in the, uh, so, you have um, labeled in meters as opposed to by frequency, which means that it's the label is backwards, right? Because of course, as you as the number gets smaller, the frequency gets higher. So, uh, with the exception of the FM, which is labeled in megahertz, just for further inconsistency. Um, but uh, you can see that it had. Uh, it's, you know, it essentially has the 49 meter band. Um, it's got medium wave and long wave, right? Uh, the antenna has been replaced. This is the original one. You, well, you can actually see if you look at this. The original one there had a uh, a nice flexible antenna on it that went up and down. This is just one that my dad got at Radio Shack and replaced it with. It just goes straight up. Works fine though. Um, no problem. So the battery box doesn't work on this, which I know and I know why, because again, I was in here, you know, maybe when I was 17, 18. Um, and uh, so I do have an external power supply, so I'm gonna plug it in and I'll show you what its behavior is. So I will add one more thing about this radio is that it was plugged in with a bracket, which is long gone, into our Peugeot 403, which was the car my parents had when I was a kid and operated as a car radio. That wasn't terribly uncommon for European cars in that era. The thing that was less common about this is that this was in Northern California where both the Centrum radio and the Peugeot 403 were a fairly rare bird. Okay, so let's turn it on. And as you can see, crackly. And we're now in shortwave. Well, there's not much point in being there. We'll be in medium wave. It's deaf. You can push in the button and you'll notice the the uh, backlight functions. I think when it's connected with car mode, there's a connector on the back for that. That's actually connected to the panel light circuit. But that 7.5 volts is probably designed for a 6 volt electrical system, which presumably the Peugeot had. Well, that would have been a bit late for it. Okay, so 
we can see tone control is working but scratchy. Uh, so let's go into FM and turn down the volume. Uh, put up the antenna a bit. So as you can see, FM is working um, reasonably well. Let's try, and I believe this symbol here means that the external antenna is active for those two. I'm just going by uh, process and elimination of what it's got to mean. I wouldn't really expect to pick up anything on the 49 meter band with an indoor antenna at this time of day. But I've got to say, I'm not hearing anything that sounds like, you know, we should hear some interference, right, from all the electronics around here that would be tunable. And I don't think that there's, it doesn't sound to me like it's doing anything. And of course, long wave, there's nothing in Toronto at the moment. So the question is, what's going on? Well, FM's working. Output. Um, power amp, I guess, for want of a better word, is working. The buttons seem to be working, although it might be. Yeah, you know. So, I don't know if you could hear that. I've got the, the mic in on as a lab mic sometimes. I hook it to the tripod when I'm using the, the screen, but I'm thinking, so some, something in the AM circuitry, right? This is all in the AM side here, um, is not functioning, most likely given it's 1967 that there are bad capacitors in it. But we know again that the, uh, that the, the um, power amp is working because FM is working, and FM seems to be working reasonably well. So my memory is that this is extraordinarily complex inside. Um, so let's have, uh, let me get the, the case off, um, and let's see if we can see anything inside the radio. So here's a look at the bottom. We have four screws, which I think we'll remove. There are I don't think there's anything that we directly need to remove here. I think that holds a bracket on. This is, as you see, been dropped, and since it weighs, you know, something on the order of eight pounds, um, there are a number of cracks in it. You can see where that's cracked off. And one of the things that's in here, and I believe that bolt holds on, is a little connector that connects the battery box to the radio. And that, I recall, does not work. And that's why it's been used with a, an external power supply for like 25, 30 years. And that was the last time I was inside this thing. Um, yeah. So I'm going to take those four screws out and see what I can do. On the side, you have a number of, of, of inputs or outputs. You've got a DIN output, I believe. Um, that's, the power, that's the power. One of these is a barrel jack antenna connector, that one. And that's a, uh, a phono out. And when it was connected as a car radio, it used this edge connector here to, to connect to the radio bracket. All right, so let's see if I can get it apart. So what I noticed is that I did actually attempt to fix the battery box. I soldered a wire to the terminals. They used to go to this down here, and then this slid on this connector slid onto this little piece of board, which is broken off. So what I did as a teenager was solder that onto there and, uh, and just clip it in place. So you could still pull it off. Um, I have no idea whether that actually worked as a, as a solution. Here's the rest of the chassis. Let me see if I can clip that and take that apart, and then um, and we'll have a look at the chassis. So here is the front of the chassis with the speaker, which is in 
beautiful condition. Um, there's the tuning condenser over here, uh, pointing tool. This is the switch for the band switch, which is this gang switch here. Um, yeah, so this has to be, it looks like that, like the tuning condenser, well, it's air gap, so that's nice. Um, anyway, let's have a look around the other side. Not much to see here. So on this side, we can see the back of the speaker. There's the dial cord coming up and through here. There's, you can see, the dial pointer for the FM. Um, is there a separate tuning condenser for the FM? There must be. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, transformers there. There's the antenna. You can see that the original antenna ran in this sleeve, and this one has just been screwed in as a replacement. Everything's labeled on these boards. Yeah, resistor 11. I'm obviously can't see everything, but I'm not seeing a lot of electrolytic capacitors. There's one there. This has got to be, this is the dial cord coming around. This has to be the FM. Let's see, there's got to be a second. So this is the FM tuning condenser in here. How is that? Let's look at the edge. Okay, so what we can see now is that we've got an AM tuning condenser here and an FM tuning condenser here. It looks like it. It's got to be. Is the FM radio entirely independent of the AM radio? Okay, so when you turn AM, it tunes that. And as we know, that's connected to an entirely conventional tuning condenser, which we can see back down there. Sorry, this is going to be what, total wiggle vision. We can see. That motion, the rotary motion around there, is being converted into linear, linear motion pulling on this string here. Is it using an inductor? Is it moving an iron rod in and out for the FM? Well, you can't see because it's under that can. This one right here but there's a clip. Let's see if we can see what's in here. Ah. I can't get it off, so I'm gonna leave it for now. So I did make a, an attempt to spray out these switches just to eliminate that as a possibility. And that doesn't seem to have done much of anything. So I'm trying to think about how I'm going to approach troubleshooting this. I think hidden under the can under here, under here, is the FM circuitry, and it is working, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, this must be the AM section, and it's quite possible 
This up here is the amplifier board. That also seems to be working. So let's not touch it unnecessarily. Uh, so that means that the issue then might be in here. And we can see the transistors, like one, two, three, four, five. All right, there'd probably be more, but I can count five anyway. Um, there's one electrolytic capacitor there. There are not a lot of electrolytic capacitors in this circuit. Although this, you know, looking at this board on the side, which I thought was a power board, that's probably your amplifier pair. There's probably another one on the other side, right? It seems to me that a lot of these are germanium, kind of, they like to, they like to, to mount them the output pair, yeah, there's the other one there, on heat sinks, often right near the output transformer. So that's what that is, probably. One there, one there. And this is probably the preamplifier. Yeah, there's the lamp that's providing the backlight. And the power board is on the other side. This is actually the power board over here. So this has got to be the amplifier board. I'm not entirely sure what this is. But, I mean, then if we're looking at electrolytic capacitors, what do we see? One, two, three. Let's, I think that's an inductor here. And there are a number on this board, but it's working, so probably wouldn't touch those. I wouldn't even begin to know how one would go about um, aligning this. I mean, the aligning procedure is probably in the schematics, but it will be A in German and B require equipment I don't have. And there also could be a bad transistor in there too, of course. So I think that's where I'm going to stop for this today. Um, yeah, and you can see why it's so heavy. I mean, talk about well built. Not German simplicity here. But um, yeah, I mean, look at this. This was certainly an expensive radio. Look at these beautifully made LEDs wire on the ferrite and then the coil here. Beautifully done. Hmm. Well, I think that's it for me today. I need to look at the schematic and think about what my approach is going to be. I mean, I just look at that and go, let's get that. But even getting to it isn't going to involve removing Yeah, this slides in here. Screws on there. How do you even get to it without taking the whole thing apart? Jeez. I'm tempted to say it works on FM. Let's leave it alone. <laughs> anyway, hope that was interesting. As you can see, this is a project that is um, feels a bit beyond me at the moment. Thanks all.